this first part of a really weird sunroof. Hello, welcome to the 6% Recycled YouTube channel and a special episode where I'm going to do a collaboration with Functional Histories and we're going to turn this into this. Well, in, in Hot Wheels form, but more about that later. Let's get to it. I've been able to find a couple of these 73 Hondas and it's a year older than my Honchero, but it'll do just fine. It's already customized sort of like the Honchero, but there's going to be a lot of stuff I got to do to it. So let's pop this sucker open. I'm not nice with them like Functional Histories is. I'm just going to pop it out of there. So I'm going to take this bad boy apart, strip it, and then start doing the body modifications. So before I go too much further, I've got to find the wheels I need for it. And yeah, I've taken quite a few Hot Wheels apart. I was doing this fairly well for a little bit there, but then I started doing real cars and this kind of went by the wayside. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to open a whole new car to find the right wheels. So let's go to my stockpile. Well, my other stockpile. So don't tell anybody about this, but I have a stockpile of real riders. I need wheels like this Unimog has, but I need them in a much smaller size. Let's see what else I've got. There we go. And those should be just the right size. I'm not a purist in any way with Hot Wheels. I don't mind taking them apart. If I have find something on something I like, I will buy the car. At least I used to when I was doing them all the time. Just for specific parts and pieces. Like this little guy is pretty cool. I might end up doing something with this at some point. But for right now, I need its wheels. So it's going to get popped apart. I'm going to go ahead and drill the posts out. I might have to drill the front one out just to here, but nope. There we go. And unfortunately, with the metal ones, I'm going to go ahead and break the tabs out so I can take the wheels out. Well, it's a pretty cool little car. It even has a little windshield banner. Let's go ahead and drill the Honda apart. By some chance, I break something. I do have extras. There we go. One tiny chassis. That's the interior. Most of that's going to be gone. Glass, I only need part of that. And the body. Actually pretty well detailed. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose this post. I'll have to find another way to connect it in the back because that post is going to go away because this roof is going to get chopped right there. I snap the little ears off on a car I'm not going to reuse. Gently wiggle the axle out. Sometimes you have to be a little more persuasive with those ears. My Dremel's broken, otherwise I just sand that top down and pop the axle out. There are definitely better ways to do this. This is just the way that I do it. The last time I did this was before I had cataract surgery. I could only see things extremely right in front of my face. Now I can't see finer details because I have almost perfect vision at a distance. I've basically gone backwards. Let's just make this a little complicated because I can't see the up-close fine details that are in here. So basically, that's what it looks like, to me anyway. That's right there. There we go. Okay. So both of them are out. Let's throw it in the Honda. Once I pop the old axles out, I just use a little screwdriver to wedge the plastic retainer open. And once I'm done with everything, I will wedge it closed again. There's double retainers in the front and a single in the back. Just going to make sure everything fits together before I go completely tearing it apart again. And there we go, the beginnings of the Honchero. These wheels are almost exactly right for the car. I'm going to go ahead and take it all apart. I normally use citrus strip with a mount, so I've got air stripper, so I'm going to see how that does for the body. And i got to start cutting stuff up. Now off to the stripper with you. Well, let's see how the aircraft stripper works. Let's see if the aircraft stripper works. No, for crying out loud. Probably a little excessive, but you know, I want this to go quickly. So we'll check on that in a while. Let's see how the aircraft stripper did. Pretty well, actually. That's gooey. Oh, that stuff stinks. Okay. I hit it with another coat on the inside. And then I should be able to just simply wash it off with water real well and uh, wire wheel it up, clean it up. That worked pretty well. 
Then I'll hit it with a wire wheel to get the rest of the junk off. Any of this inside stuff I can pick out as I'm going, so I have to cut everything up anyway. <laughs> Got the body all cleaned up and I went ahead and did the first cut on the roof line. I'm gonna make a second cut along here because I need to save the C pillars and move those forward. Then I'm gonna clean up this back section, but I'm gonna cut this next slice out of the roof and I'll figure out what height I want to cut these at. I do have extra body, so if I need to cut more material out and slide it all forward from a different car, I can do that. I've got the second cut 90% done. Then I'm gonna to have to bring the jeweler saw in through here and cut that center of the post out. Using a jeweler saw allows you to make very detailed cuts and fine, precise work on these small little Hot Wheels cars. Now this is going to take me a while. Or not. Of course, now I have things stuck. <laughs> I don't know how you get things stuck together, but hey, whatever. I just cut something off and now it's stuck on the saw blade. Seriously? <laughs> oh, there we go. Jeez. This first part of a really weird sunroof. No, that cut looks like. Oh, I'm glad I have files. And I cut the back roof piece off, but unfortunately, with the angles in the back area and how all this kind of raises up towards the back, I'm going to have to form this so that it's nice and even like the real car. I'm going to have to cut a second rear roof piece off of one of my extra cars to get it so I can slide it all up and forward. So I'm going to spend the next hour trying to nicely massage this in, massage the roof line a bit, and get this thing ready to go. Decided to go ahead and cut the second roof section off. And there we go. Now I just have to find it. It rolled away on the floor. So now I just have a bunch of sanding to do. And I can get these two pieces to meet. I mean, that's, that's definitely the roof line of the car. I've already got the passenger side fender and tailgate roughly in the shape I need it to be. Now I'm going to see what I can do with the driver's side area here. I'll throw this little piece of tape on it to try to prevent the file from hitting the fenders. This driver's side has definitely rounded off a little bit better. I'm going to round it, fit it in here with the tailgate, round it all around there a little bit better and smooth it all out. Then I can clean this up in here, clean up the roof line a small bit. If you have a chance to pick up these small machinist files, they work amazingly on everything I've worked with them on so far. It's been in the soup for a while. Let's see what's left of this paint. Not much, thankfully. Wash it off, hit it with the wire wheel, and this thing is well, ready to do the rest of the actual work to it. Starting to come together, I'm going to look at some of the photos of the car and make sure I've got the basic shapes right. And I will start doing the final little bit of sanding here and there. And I'm going to try to cube on the roof to the roof and see how well that works. I'll see you the idea where I need to cut the back of the interior part to make everything fit correctly. It looks like I can cut it right behind the seats. I'm going to use this cube on super glue and the reinforcing stuff. Hopefully it'll give a good bond. Trying to give everything that last little bit of chamfer so that the surfaces have something to bond into so there's a valley like welding so there's something where the materials will grab into at least that's the hope i'm gonna have to use spot putty on this afterwards anyway to fill these little gaps and also to kind of make everything look consistent and then i gotta ruin it because the car is kind of a mess i was able to get the top glued on pretty smoothly it's off just a hair but i can get that with some putty and some filing i had a massive dump of the Cubon powder. So I've spent about 30 minutes cleaning it all off of this fender flare. I still have to clean a little more from the looks of it. Then I can start gluing these sides on, hit them with a little bit of the powder, and then I can start forming it. I can start putting the thin layer of uh, putty onto it. I use this glazing and spot putty. So I'll put a thin layer of that on after I give it a f first sanding so that it smooths everything out. I was able to use the other one that I cut the pieces off of to start, whoop, start forming this back panel. I'll end up gluing that into the other model and I'll make a back shelf area in here for the bed. It's not going to be super, super detailed, but I think it'll look pretty cool. Poured some of the Cubon powder out and try real hard to uh, 
get this to lay in better than I did the other side. Thankfully this stuff sands pretty well, but I, if I can avoid doing any extra work, I'm going to try to do that. I'll end up giving that some time to dry, and then I can do that first light sanding like I mentioned, and then I'll put the putty onto it. It should look pretty good. I'm going to start working on the interior stuff and try to get that done, or at least closer to being done. Using evergreen sheet stock plastic for the flooring, for the back wall. I've had pretty good results with this stuff. It's easy to form. They make it in all kinds of different shapes and styles. This is what I'm using as 20 thou thick, or 5 mils. The glue is dried. I'm going to shave the little bit of excess off the body. And then sand all three areas and get them ready. I got the back wall and the floor done. I'm going to have to make the sides, but I'm going to wait till I get it in here first. And these nail files actually work pretty good for this stuff it's starting to look like a honda well it's starting to look like a honjero next thing i should make are the block off panels that go in here probably going to do that now and then i can put a little bit of glue into this joint here which will just seal everything up i started gluing the back panel or we call it the b trim panel the b firewall the rear firewall whatever you'd like to call it but i started gluing that in place let that dry and then I'll glue each side, then I'll pull the interior out and then I'll seam seal it for lack of a better term. And get moving on to the floor. My glazing putties had a chance to dry overnight, so let's go ahead and knock the big stuff off and then we'll fine sand it. Probably gonna need another application of this stuff, but we'll see how it goes. The biggest thing is I need to fill this line where these two pieces meet. And I'm not getting too discouraged or too over reactive about it simply because it's not supposed to look good it's supposed to look like the car and the car definitely has its uh, issues so a little bit of imperfections are fine because the car has quite a bit of imperfections put a steering wheel in there from another vehicle did a little detail painting on the seat belts and some of the interior pieces got the little guy finished last night got the bed floor into it it's not 100% accurate to the car, but it should be pretty cool. And I think what Functional Histories is going to do to this thing is going to be pretty darn awesome. So, you know, get it put together one last time, show you what it looks like, get it in the box, and get it in the mail. And drop it. And there we go. I can't get the light in here quite like I want it to be. So unfortunately the light isn't perfect i do apologize for that and it'll get better if i do more of these videos and this is rough but the car is actually rough so i'm basically trying to mimic what the car looks like in real life well, as best i can anyway so definitely go check out functional histories like i said before i'm excited that we're doing the collaboration i think they make some really cool stuff and i think this is going to look awesome when they get their touches done to it First part is in packaging for safekeeping. If you decide you'd like to see me do more of this stuff, let me know in the comments. Like I said, I haven't done this for a long time, as I had other stuff I was doing. I was finally able to start working on cars again, which does take a lot of my uh, physical ability with my body the way it is. But, you know, I'm trying to do as much as I can while I can. It does get a little interesting to try to pack this stuff. I've never packed pieces before. These are hard enough to pack just doing a car to ship it somewhere, let alone the, 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 the pieces. Can't English today. Everything's packed up and it's time to get it in the mail. I'm really looking forward to Functional Issues doing the finishing touches this thing. I think it's going to look awesome. I'm glad I got to do part of it. This is getting me back into doing Hot Wheels and that's pretty awesome. It was a lot of fun doing it. I definitely like working on bigger cars more, but this, there's a lot more detail and a lot of things I can actually afford to do customizing cars to these little guys. I'm pointing at my curio cabinet. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this different type of video. If you'd like to see more of this content in the future, let me know. Definitely go check out Functional Histories. I'll link them again in the description below. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do with the car. Thank them very much. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time.